So for our cryptocurrency segment today, as I alluded to at the beginning of the show, there's a lot of clickbait and FUD, if I may be so bold, about Ethereum. And let's look at the title of this article. The title of this article, this is from Trust Nodes, okay? I'd expect to see this kind of stuff from C, you know, from CNN. It says Vitalik Buterin crashed Ethereum's price. Blockchain analysis shows. Now that that is a hell of a thing to say. That is a hell of a thing to say in a time when so many people have begun to distrust the media. So many people have begun to distrust headlines, and something that we try to be very careful about here. And it's difficult sometimes to strike a fine balance between, you know, engaging the audience and providing a title that will generate excitement and generate the desire to watch and being honest and ethical. This, if there's anything in here that's incorrect, this is spurious. So I want to break this down uh, because I've had my team look into this quite a bit. So here we go. Again, title of the article is it's a statement. Vitalik Buterin crashed Ethereum's price, according to the blockchain. So, of course, Vitalik Buterin is Ethereum's co-founder. Um, and from blockchain analysis, it does show that he has sold at the top, sold his personal Ethereum holdings at the top in almost all cases since 2016, with price drastically falling every time around the same period he sold. Now, of course, this does raise the question did Vitalik time the tops perfectly or do other market participants track Vitalik's movements and react accordingly, triggering deeper sell-offs? So uh, we do have, this is a snapshot of the particular address right here. And again, if you guys go to those show notes at breakingbitcoin.money after the show or check out the podcast, you can see I'm going to link everything there on the show notes. Uh, but the Ethereum address associated with Vitalik's personal holdings uh, begins uh, 0xAB, ends uh, AEC9B. Uh, and we can examine how the sales coincided with market volatility. And the above address that I just mentioned uh, began with 500,000 Ethereum. Some 14,000 of it was sold at the very peak of the first big bull run on June 14th, 2017. And then another 20,000 Ethereum was gradually sold moving into July uh, 2017, meaning the June and July sales of Ethereum added up to about $12 million in profit at the time. Now, as price began heading into the second half of 2017, and in fact went on to moon later that year, let us never forget, December 17, 2019, uh, Vitalik appears to have sold another 30,000 Ethereum on December 13, 2017. Uh, with the price of Ethereum now at that time around seven or excuse me, around seven hundred dollars. Now that netted him a further twenty one million dollars in profit. And then around January 14th, 2018, at all time highs and just prior to the sell off that would go on to mark the 2000, the beginning of the 2019 bear market of uh, Vitalik did move another ten thousand Ethereum at the time worth about thirteen million dollars. However, at this point. I do want to make very, very clear that unlike previous sales in which Vitalik transferred directly to Bitstamp, this time Vitalik seems to have been potentially aware of others closely monitoring the movements out of his Ethereum wallet and chose to obfuscate this transaction by routing the Ethereum through VB2, MakerDAI, and Oasis. Okay, So during the course of 2018, uh, Vitalik's, uh, Vitalik's generosity came online. Uh, he began donating at Ethereum at a time when Ethereum was at its very bottom. Which, you know, for those who held, turned out pretty good for them. Now, it was about a year ago in the November-December 2018 stretch of the bear market when Ethereum reached its local low of $80 when Vitalik started to donate to various projects working on the Ethereum ecosystem. And at the same time, the donations were highly publicized with a high-profile Twitter announcement uh, with three several, with three, uh, let's see if we got a, picture of that in here. We'll just go up here. Uh, with, uh, excuse me, uh, with three separate announcements or three uh, individual startups receiving about $100,000 worth of Ethereum each at that time, which obviously is much more now. 
Uh, he made some other donations that uh, apparently amount to about $8 million or so, but we can't easily see them on the blockchain, so they were perhaps in fiat. So if we look, however, at the early days of Ethereum, we can see that Vitalik first sold 50,000 Ethereum on the 13th of March, 2016. And at that time, price was $14, uh, with this marking his first payday worth about $700,000. Now, another 50,000 Ethereum was sold on the 2nd of August of 2016, when, when price was around $10, his second payday, uh, netting him about 500 grand. Now, at the time of the Dow, fork, Vitalik's balance somehow increased by 60,000 Ethereum, which was quickly turned around on September 2nd, 2016, when he cashed out 80,000 Ethereum worth about a million dollars at the time. So really his first, you know, in my opinion, first big seven figure payday. Uh, on the 4th of May, 2017, when Ethereum was around hundred dollars, he sold another 20,000 Ethereum, adding another $2 million to his net worth. Uh, while the price of Ethereum did see a mini crash immediately following that. So in total, uh, what we've just analyzed is about $50 million that Vitalik has earned over the years from the sale of Ethereum. Now, he still holds around 350,000 Ethereum in his main address. And assuming that we don't see a, a, an, an insane, complete market capitulation, this, of course, does ensure that he will be a very wealthy man for a very long time to come. Now, while the sum itself is obviously interesting, if anything, I, I want to make this very, very clear. Um, $50 million is a fairly underwhelming sum for the co-founder of the, of the highest profile smart contract platform. Uh, this, this is not a lot of money for somebody as high profile as Vitalik Buterin. So the idea that he has done anything disingenuous here, I want to make very, very clear that we do not uh, believe that or that we are attempting to make it sound like that whatsoever. In fact, um, I'm rather impressed. Uh, and, and I would be very fairly shocked uh, if an individual that had put his life's work into a project uh, refused to take some profit and realize it on the way up. Because the reality of the situation is, folks, and I want to make this I want, I want to make this very clear for the people who might scream that the fact that he sold Ethereum at all would show that he doesn't have faith in his project or that he that it's a scam or anything like that. No, I mean, the, the reality is he, he's put his life's work into Ethereum and you pay your bills in fiat. You pay your bills in fiat. And uh, I just cannot counsel or get behind the idea that an individual who has worked hard to create something that's valuable and is, it, it is utilized is not able to profit from that. He's not able to realize the, 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 the labor, the fruit of his labor. So, uh, and again, he still has the great, the, the great majority of his Ethereum still. Let's make that very, very clear. Now, while the sum is interesting, as I said, it's fairly underwhelming. But what is more interesting for us here on this channel is the considerable price fall every time that he has chosen to sell. So this suggests either that he is taking no care to sell in a way that limits slippage um, through, for example, block trading, uh, or it suggests that people assume he knows something that they don't. And thus, a lot of market participants who are monitoring his Ethereum address are just front running him and trying to join him at the same time. So to, to make that more clear, um, either... Uh, what, what, what seems more likely here is that individuals are just monitoring the highest profile developer for Ethereum. And when he sells, you have a huge wave of individuals that are like, well, he must know something that we don't when he's just oh, price looks pretty high, better take some profit. Right. There's, seems to be a pretty savvy trader. He seems to get every peak. Right. Every time there's a big spike, he's like, that's a good opportunity to take some profit. Beep. And then the but the rest of the market sees this and they're like, he must know something that we don't. There must be a huge dump coming in. He's selling. We better sell, too which I feel is far more likely. Now, this seemingly cunning ability to know the top does raise some questions, uh, although, of course, it could have been coincidence or it could have uh, been caused by him, or perhaps it would be his naivety in not considering how others might react to his blockchain movements. I've worked with many developers in my life, and they are not the most cognizant of the social implications of their actions. Yet, for somebody who ostensibly doesn't care much about price, it does look according to blockchain data, that he has shown a lot of interest in the price of Ethereum when it came time to sell. 
Although a man of his intelligence could hardly be expected to foolishly sell at the bottom either. So, uh, overall interesting. Uh, I think the title of this article is spurious. I think the contents of this article is largely spurious. Um, really actually kind of disappointed in the trust nodes with this piece of journalism here. Uh, great, great journalisming here from trust nodes. Uh, but I did want to point that out. I did want to look at the facts. Obviously, you guys can go. The link will be in the show notes. Uh, it's pretty easy to find. You guys can Google this. Uh, but I wanted to go over this, give my opinion on this. I don't think that it is. I don't think that it is scammy or wrong or weird or telling that an individual uh, is a savvy trader or and I, and I think it's very clearly explained from social implications why the market would seem to fall after he sells. Because, again, people would tend to know that he think or would tend to think that he knows something that he doesn't. So when a lot of individuals see that and see the desire to sell, the market moves down. So let me know your guys's thoughts on this. Let me know your guys' opinions. Leave them in the comment section down below if you're watching a Breaking Bitcoin Bits, if this is recorded, if you're seeing this at a later date. Or let me know your thoughts in the live chat, and I will get to them in the question and answer section.